Hi everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel and my craft room. I'm Shelly Geigel with JS Hobbies and Crafts and this tutorial is just on how to make this base album. And it is seven inches uh, by eight and a half, well about eight and three quarters by the time we're done wrapping it and assembly. Uh, this is the same base album that I used in my Around the World uh, mini album tutorial. So it does have that really cool swing latch uh, style for the closure and what you'll be learning to do is wrapping and planting your pages in there. So let's hop on over to the materials list. Okay, so all you're going to need is some score tape. For me, I am using some quarter inch and some three eighths inch score tape and alternating between the two. Um, if all you have is quarter inch, that's fine. Uh, Tyvek. Tyvek is in the binding. It's what keeps your album from ever separating. Uh, you will want uh, to purchase uh, some 110 pound cardstock. And the 110 pound cardstock is for your inner pages and everything else in there except for wrapping the um, outside. Uh, you may want to pick up some 65 pound for wrapping the outside. I find that there's less splitting with a lighter weight versus a heavy weight. However, I do uh, wrap my albums in heavy weight all the time and I'm okay, but it is much easier with a 65 pound. Um, you will need, um, and you only need four sheets of the 65 pound. You'll need a couple sheets of the 12 by 12 medium weight chipboard and you will need some glue, and you don't need that much. But I am using the Art Glitter Dries Clear Glue, and there's no glitter in it. It's good for metal, uh, wood, paper, resin, whatever. I am using the Tim Holtz Long Fasteners because the swing latches do not come with brads. Um, these are just regular size brads, and this is just a variety pack. There's some silver, copper, and antique gold ones in here. Okay, you're gonna need um, swing latch. Now, some of our swing latches, like for instance, this is the antique bronze. Um, this latch actually swings to towards the left and would hook like this, okay? We have some nickel ones, and if you notice, this one swings to the right. So it makes no difference which one that you use, if it swings to the left or to the right. It, it matters not. And in this tutorial, I'll be showing you exactly how to shim the side that needs to be shimmed. And this is loose because I did not glue it down yet because I am going to need to put decorative paper on here when I use this for my project. So it's still loose. Okay, what else do we need? All right, well, you're going to want a scoring board, your scoring tool for sure, scissors, pencil. If you have binder clap, blinder, blah, 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 blah. I can't speak today. Binder clamps or binder clips, just two of those would be good. And the pencil eraser and a ruler for sure. And I'm going to be using my DBS uh, wooden ruler that gives me all my measurements, sixteenths, the eighths, the everything I need. Okay, I think that is it. Oh, craft knife, sorry. This one almost got away from us. We're going to need a craft knife. And if you have a heavy duty punch that can get through, medium weight chipboard, do grab it. If not, I show you how to use your craft knife. Alrighty, last but not least. Something new that I am doing is you can download, and, and a link is underneath this uh, tutorial to the website where you can purchase supplies, but also you can download a copy of the materials list and you can download a copy of this. And this is your pre-cuts to um, cut ahead before you start the tutorial. So it will say chipboard pieces. You're going to need two seven inch by eight and a half inch and so forth cardstock and what you need for Tyvek. And then there's this little handy little notes paper that you can jot down notes, tips, or whatever else that you'd like to do. Okay, let's get started.
we are ready to go. I got all my pieces cut. All right, the pieces that you want are the four, eight and a half by nine inches. And so you don't get turned around because eight and a half and, and the nine inches, they're so close. So the first thing I want you to do is measure. So this is eight and a half. I know I need to turn it. The way that we're going to be looking at this, my cat has been on my craft desk, and this is nine inches. To keep yourself straight here, I want you to put a nine at the top of each one of your pieces, okay? Do not worry, uh, it is not going to show. This is just so an accident won't happen and you won't have to recut. Grab your quarter inch score tape and on three of these sheets, we're going to lay a piece on the right hand side. And that's the right hand side only. So here's one piece. And again, the nine's at the top. Here's the second piece. And here is my third piece. The fourth piece does not get any score tape down the side. But one thing you are going to want to do, okay, is flip over your piece. If you can see any of that score tape peeking over the edge, trim it. Okay, I love to see people succeed, and please feel free to email me your uh, finished album pictures and let me know how you like the tutorial. You can comment right underneath this video. I love feedback. Okay, on all three of these, so uh, let's not set ourselves up for failure. Um, this is a very important step. You're going to take your bone folder, and you are going to run it over those score tapes. And the reason why is because of air. Even though it seems like it's down, you'll want to use this to burnish it down really good. Over time, if there are air bubbles or air underneath your score tape, your um, paper can lift or even your hinges. So um, let's be better safe than sorry and keep this handy because every time we lay score tape, that is the tool we're going to use. Okay, so we're going to start here. And um, another tip, really quick, about score tape. And this is very important as well. Um, you'll want to wash your hands before handling this. You'll want to get all the lotions and oils off your skin. Um, have you ever taken a piece of scotch tape and um, you touch it with your fingers, you can see your fingerprint or some of the residue off your fingertips. Okay, right then and there, you just um, loosened up the adhesive. That is the same with score tape. So it's impossible for us to keep our hands off of it entirely. So the best rule of thumb is to make sure before handling it, you wash your hands and, and strip it clear of any lotions or oils. Uh, I like to use a craft knife and if you are a beginner um, it helps to release the score tape um, backing. Okay. okay so I took off the score tape backing off one side and what I'm going to do is lay this right over it but I want to keep it straight so this is how I usually do it. Now you can use your scoring board or whatever, but I like to use the flat edge against my paper cutter. Okay, and I just lay that right there. Then what I do, and I'm taking this one, and this has the score tape off to the right, is I line it up so they're both up against this flat surface. And then what I, I do is just bring it right on top of that score tape and that way it helps me to stay even. Not always, but it helps. So once you've done that, let's burnish it down. We're going to repeat what we just did. We're going to grab our next piece of cardstock. Remember the nine is at the top and this one has the score tape off to the right. 
So I'm just going to push that right on up against there, line this up, and use my bone folder. Again, if you wrote on yours, don't worry, you will not see it. Okay? I did it for easy identification um, for you all. Okay, last piece. This is the piece that has no score tape. Our score tape is actually on this one. And we're going to just take off the adhesive and do the same thing. I'm just kind of pushing my stuff down out of the way to make room on my table here. Okay. We are good. And we're going to keep the nines at the top. Okay. What we're going to do is prep for our chipboard now. So the first one, sorry, it's bouncing around on us there. The first piece that we want is the one and a half inch. This is one and a half inch by seven inches. Okay? And you're going to need your ruler for this. So what you're going to want to do is take your ruler, go to the edge of your paper, measure over one inch, and make a pencil mark. Just like that. We're going to do the same thing from the top and going to the bottom. So I think that's about an inch. Approximately, anyway. If you're a little off, it's not going to hurt nothing. I'm going to bring my one inch over here a little, little more. Okay, so what you're going to want to do at this point is lay this down. Bring it over to that one, that one inch side mark. You can use your ruler at this point to put it on that one inch down below to help keep it straight. So there's that. And I should be pretty even when I move this. Now, oh, there we go. So what we're going to do is we're just going to use our pencil and we're going to draw around this. Okay? All we're doing is marking the spot before we put adhesive on this to make sure all our pieces are straight. And we do have to trim this down, but we won't do it until we draw around all our stuff. Now this particular album, because we are wrapping it this way, we're going to have to put a spacing in between each chipboard piece. Otherwise it's not going to close. So I'm going to lay this down and we're going to put a 3 8 inch space. So from this line here, measure over 3 8 and make a pencil mark. Now what we're going to do is grab one of our covers and our cover piece was seven inches by eight and a half okay we are seven inches this way and that's how we want to lay this this album's more on the landscape so you have your mark you made for the three eighths we're just going to bring that up look at your spacing make sure you are straight Okay, here and here. It may help if you put your ruler, whether you do it up this way, it's easier that you can see over, or this way. But put your ruler down, straight, and then you can draw your line. And that line should be straight with the line over here. So I've got mine started. I don't need the ruler up there anymore. So we're just drawing around it. Okay. Okay, the next piece is the 3 by 7 chipboard piece. However, we have to put that 3 8 inch line in there. So I'm just going to place this down. 3 8 I'll bring that over to 3 8 And for me, it's easier to go from the top. Line it up with the other lines and push that up. And once we're done drawing, you can reevaluate your your stuff and make any adjustments. Okay. Okay. So we have that piece. 
The next piece that we're going to want is our other cover. And it's a seven by eight and a half. And this seven up here. We have to put that three eighths inch spacing in there. So I'm just going to measure my three eighths. Place my ruler and line it up with my other lines there. Bring this over. And now we just draw. And while I'm doing this, I'm looking to check to make sure I'm not going crooked. Or at least trying not to go crooked. <laughs> okay. Alright. We're going to place our ruler and do another 3 8 inch spacing. We are going to grab our other spine piece here. And we're just going to line that up so we are even with the other. And we will draw. Okay. Okay, now we are getting ready to cut off the excess here. So take your ruler, measure over one inch, make a pencil mark. Now put this on your paper cutter, slide that in there, and trim. Before we start laying any of our stuff, take a look. Hold it up, take a look. Are you pretty even? I look even enough. So we're going to get ready to add our adhesive to this. So I have the one and a half inch by seven inch. And it's easier for me using my three eighths because it's wider. And I am just going to lay score tape, so I'm going to make sure I get my edges, and I'll just go one down the middle, and I'll have some spacing in between. It's perfectly fine. And my craft knife seemed to got legs and ran off on me. Here it is. Let's remove the backing off of our piece. And we're just going to place it right in that area, trying to keep it straight with our lines. And, and we can flip this over and do the same thing when we're done. All right, the next piece is our chipboard cover, okay? And that's going to lay right there. We're going to leave that spacing in there. So with this one, because you may have embellishments on it, we're going to make sure we cover this pretty good. The first thing that I like to do is go around the edges like a picture frame. Okay, so let's start there. Next we're going to lay a piece right in the middle. We'll put one on either side in the middle. And then we're going to lay one here, 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 and here. And I think that's plenty. And if you've got heavier embellishments, your paper will not buckle. Okay. Make sure your score tape is burnished down. Let's remove the score tape backing and place it down. If you need to use your ruler to help you out, do so. And we'll flip this over, like I said, to make sure everything's burnished down on the other side. Next, we need our 3 by 7 piece. And I'm using my 3 8 inch. Sorry if the camera is bouncing around a little there. And we're going to go around the outside like a picture frame. Okay. We're going to go one down the middle and one on either side. Burnish. Okay, we're going to place this one. Okay. We are moving on. This is our seven by eight and a half inch, and we're going to do this the same way that we did the other one. We're going to first start going around the outside like a picture frame, one down the middle. We'll go one on either side, and then we will cut in between. And I'll show you mine 
before I place it. So this is mine. And I'm going to use my tool to burnish down everything. It's funny because sometimes you can actually hear the score tape, the uh, bubbles underneath it when you're getting out, when it's uh, when you're burnishing it down. You can actually hear it sometimes, getting the air out. We're just going to place this like we did before. Okay, the last one is this. And on this one, this is part of our uh, main latch. So let's go around the outside like a picture frame to start. The next thing that we're going to want to do is completely cover this. Okay, burnish that down really good. And now we're just going to remove our score tape and place it. Okay, let's flip this over. And we are going to use our tool to burnish down. Make sure all that score tape is down. I need to sanitize my desk. My cat has been up here wandering around. Okay, so um, before we start folding and doing all that, I do want us to place our tie back and we're also going to place our uh, covers that go over the tie back. You should have four pieces of two inch by seven inch tie, seven inch tie back. So I'm grabbing my three eighths inch and I'm just gonna set those off to the side. I am gonna lay a piece of my three eighths, three eighths, I can't speak, three eighths inch score tape. We're gonna go two next to each other. And a tip here is make sure you do not get any score tape in that valley. You want to just go straight to your edge. If you have overhang, it isn't going to hurt anything. So we're going to do that with each side of here. So you should have where it looks like this, making sure there's nothing in those little valleys here. So this is where we definitely need to use our bone folder to get out all the air. And um, I don't just say that, it, it, it's something we have to do. So put a little pressure on that and get out any air, make sure that that is down. Okay, so what we're going to do is remove the score tape. Now, this may not be quite wide enough to cover yours, depending on how um, far out you went uh, with yours. Uh, mine looks like it's going to cover. Um, don't worry about it, because this is getting covered anyway, everything. So let's start over here. Okay, and I thought I cut this at 7 inches. So I'm just going to line up here and press and bring it up. Okay? Use your bone folder. Smooth that down. Use some force there. Here you'll probably see an indention. So we're going to do the same thing on each of these sections. Now one thing about wrapping an album is sometimes when you wrap you get what's called the splits. So um, it happens. Sometimes you're folding against the grain. Sometimes your your paper is too thick. Um, there's a lot of different things. Maybe too tight. Uh, not enough uh, spacing in between. This is plenty of spacing, by the way. I uh, this is the more popular way of wrapping. Uh, I do have another way that I personally like. And um, however, I only teach it sometimes. Um, I like the way it looks. Um, I do like the way this looks, but um, it's a different way. So I'll probably do a tutorial on that so people can decide what they like as far as wrapping and so forth. Okay, now one thing I want to let you know is sometimes when you're cutting your tie back, you may get seams. Okay? It's fine. Don't worry about it. It's... Uh, 
not a big deal. Not unless your Tyvek seems to be coming apart. In which case, um, you can just put a little glue to put it back together. But um, once you get this tie back down, uh, your album is pretty set as far as ever coming apart there. The next thing that we're going to want to do before we wrap is locate two of these to start. And then we'll work on this. So this one is for this side, and this one is for this side. And these are the two by seven inch pieces of white cardstock. These you're going to want to cover uh, completely. This is what's going to cover our tie back, and um, everything will blend in nicely by the time we're done. So I did it there. You definitely want to use your scoring tool. You're going to repeat that same thing for this one. So let's do that. So I released the score tape backing off one of these, and this is real simple. We'll do what, exactly what we did with the Tyvek, but we're going to place this on top of the Tyvek. And we'll do the same thing for this and place it over here. And then we're going to use our scoring tool to burnish it down. All right, we are ready to wrap. We do not place this piece until we've wrapped. And you'll see why. So what you're going to want to start doing right now is kind of bending your paper to kind of work those fibers. And it helps so you don't get the splits. Okay. If you want to use your bone folder to help you, that's fine. Okay. Yeah, we're just going to work this back and forth for a while and take your time. There's no rush. Okay, before we do any wrapping, what we want to do is miter the corners. And that's just clipping at an angle. You do want to use your ruler and from the corner tip of your chipboard, you're going to measure out one eighth inch from that tip and just make a pencil mark okay and you can eyeball that if you'd like to so on all four corners next all we have to do is cut it um, here's a tip to keep your cut um, even is I like to place my ruler and I found this is a lot easier. And I will angle it so it looks like a nice triangle, okay? And I'll just draw my little triangle there before I do anything. So I've got all this done. That um, will help me keep straight too. So, so that's all we're gonna do is clip. And I got a little crazy with my measurements with this line. That's okay. Okay, once you have that all clipped and we're ready to go, we're going to lay some score tape. And I am going to use my 3 8 And all I'm going to do is put it on the edge of my chipboard all the way around like a picture frame. So that is what I'm going to do. You can use your 3 8 or you can use your quarter. It is up to you. All right, so I've got that down and I will be burnishing this shortly. So all I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to put wrap this and go around the outside now edges of my cardstock. Now when I go all the way around this, I do go over the corner to make sure I get in there. So uh, it does not hurt anything to overlap. Um, that's just a little tip. Once you get that down, you'll want to make sure you burnish all your tape. Now if you want to lay a piece, uh, a score tape in here, you can. I think we'll be just fine. Um, if you use the quarter inch, you may want to lay an extra piece. 
and now it doesn't even matter if we get over the valley because the valley's covered by the tieback. It is time to remove score tape. So we're going to remove the score tape off of our base here. And we're just going to remove it all at once. Um, usually I do it in steps, but it's not going to hurt anything. So, And you'll want to grab your bone folder. Um, get it handy too. Alright, so um, we're going to fold in the sides first. So we're just going to flip it on over and use our tool. Make sure that's down. We're going to do the same over okay. here. Okay, so what we're going to want to do is this little corner over here. And um, what you want to do is use your bone folder and you're going to push it in your side there. So when we wrap, it's going to wrap nicely. So um, I'm just going to do it over here too. And I will zoom in. I'll zoom in down over here. It's easier. This is so big. So all I've done is I've taken my bone folder and kind of pushed that in to the side there. Over here, I've done the same thing so that when it wraps, it'll wrap nicely. Okay, I'm going to start from the middle and work my way on over here and over here. Okay, now I'm just going to use my bone folder and I'll zoom out and smooth this down really good. Make sure that the paper is all down and there's no air. Once you've done that, we're going to do the same thing again and we will wrap. Now, the splits. And a lot of times where, if I do get the splits, it's where a seam is. So um, there's ways to doctor that up and I'll show you if you get that. Okay, the splits. Sometimes where your your seam meets, uh, you may get like this, just a little bit. For me, something like that, I just trim. Or you can grab your glue and glue it back over. Now for severe, uh, for the severe uh, splits, um, especially when we go to uh, especially when we go to bend this, if you get splits here, uh, what you want to do is cover those. And you can wrap um, paper at the edges, uh, whatever you would like. So let's begin by slowly pulling in. And you can use your bone folder here to help you in the crease, but you're just going to slowly pull in. And then you can see exactly where you missed with getting that score tape uh, burnished down. You'll be able to see that. Okay, the next is this one. The next would be this one. And we're looking good over there. And over here. So our album is wrapped and um, it is looking good. So what we need to do now is get our piece that is five and a half by six and three eighths and that is going to fit right like that. However, if you wrote on this, you're going to want to just flip it over. So we'll apply our score tape on this side. And you can use your quarter inch or your three eighths inch, but the first thing that we're going to want to do is place it, go all the way around the edges like a picture frame. You'll trim off anything that overhangs when we're done here. Alright, for this we're just going to lay our score tape in strips all the way across. Once you have this down, um, it's imperative that you use your bone folder to get your score tape all the way down. I know I'm repetitive when I say that, but I just don't want you to forget, especially if this is the first time you've made an album. So, 
Okay, so looking at this, you are going to be six and three eighths inch uh, tall, and this should actually fit right over there, so your guide. So what you're going to want to do is you can use the side of your Tyvek and just move it over, and you will center this between top and bottom. So you'll have some headroom there and a little bottom room there. So I'm going to remove my score tape backing here. I've got the backing off and I am ready to place this. Again, I want to keep straight and try to center this top and bottom. And I think that's pretty good. Okay. You can use your tool if you'd like to lay a scratch piece of paper over this and then burnish, do so. But we want to make sure that this is down really good. Okay, once you have that down, you'll want to pull in, and you should not get any buckling in the creases, nothing. It should work pretty good. And when you we close it, this the large side goes in first, and this side goes over. And your album will be stiff to start. Um, do not force this all the way over to lay flat. This is not meant to. Okay. Remember the smaller hinge, side hinge is to the left, and we're going to lay our inner pages. And then we'll do the latch. You should have your 6 and 3 eighths by 8 and 7 eighths pieces. And we're just going to lay this on our scoring board. We are 8 and 7 eighths inch across at 8 and 3 eighths. We're going to score each one of these. So let's finish up by scoring each one of these at 8 and 3 eighths. And then what we're going to do is fold on our score line and burnish. I have gone ahead and scored and folded. Now, what you're going to do on each one of these, and I recommend using your 3 eighths inch score tape, is with the peak up, you're just going to lay a piece of score tape in between that score line and the edge of your paper. And then you're going to burnish it down really good. You'll clip off any overhang that you might see of score tape and then we will move on to the next one. So let's um, get this ready so that we can get these in our book. Okay, we are ready to begin. Remember, check to make sure that the smaller flap is to the left. So I burnished this down, and all I'm going to do is remove the score tape, and this is so easy. So maybe before I take that off, I will show you what we're going to be doing. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is fold up your side, like so. This little hinge just slides up right next to it, but the good thing is, is what's gonna keep us in line is you see this piece here that we laid? It's what's going to show you top and bottom to keep you straight when we lay these across. So that is what our little guide is, as well as covering up everything. So, okay, I've got the score tape backing off. I'll just pull this up a little bit, and I'm going to match it up with the side there, top and bottom. I'll press and then I'll just smooth it down. Now I am going to go back with this tool and make sure that these are all down. So there is my first one. And you can burnish that over. We're moving on to the second one. Yay! We're almost done making this album. Okay, so the second one, you're just going to butt that right up next to the one you have in there. Press it down, smooth, flip it over, make sure it's down. And then when we're done, like I said, we'll go back and make sure that they are all down and burnished. So here's our next one. This is just so easy. Press, flip it over, burnish it down. And if 
if you get yours a little bit off, that is okay. You can try to straighten it back up by maneuvering your next one. And I'm not going to worry about this because it gets covered with our decorative paper. And our final one here, we'll just lay right up there. Okay, so I'm going to take a moment and smooth this down in between to make sure that those are down really good. everything. So after you are done, this is what yours should look like. Again, this is going to be a little tight to start because it's brand new and it's going to go just like that. So this is what your spacing should look like and your hinges should be burnished down really good. All right. There it is. Let's get our uh, hinges or our swing latch, excuse me. And um, if you have the one that swings over to towards the left, or if you have the one that will swing over to the right, it makes no difference. I'm going to show you. Also, you will have, would have had a small, about two inches of uh, chipboard. And the first thing that we're going to want to do with that is just chop it right in the middle and set that off to the side. And we're going to need some brads and some tools. If you have a binder clamp or perhaps you have um, some little ratchets or clamps, make sure you line up your album and bring it all the way in like this. And then we're just going to clamp it down. If you are using metal clamps with the metal here, it will scar your paper. So you might want to put a piece of cloth in between. So that's all I want to do for now. And here, here's how this is going to work. Whatever ends up on the right side. So let's say my swing latch needs to be on that side. This is the side that's going to need the two pieces of chipboard that we cut in half as a shim. It will raise it up so then when this piece is over here it is the perfect height. Okay. If you have the swing latch that is swings to the uh, right like that then it's this piece that's going to be shimmed up so that it can reach over. But the first thing that we need to do is make some pencil marks. So Whichever latch you decide you're using, whichever one you got, let's first just put those two pieces together. And if it's easier, you can just put your shims down or whatnot. So we're just going to be marking for this. And you're going to want to have a pencil. And you're going to want to make sure that this piece over here, there is room away from the seam here. So I'm going to grab a pencil. Once I know that that is where it's going to sit, I'll just hold that with my fingers and draw a little pencil mark in those spots. So now I know where this latch is actually going to sit. Okay, we'll just set these off to the side. And we will set these off to the side. Okay. So if you have a heavy duty punch that can actually reach in and you can punch through the chipboard, then you can use that. So these are the EK tools and they are heavy duty and they will punch all the way through to make a clean hole. Don't worry about what that hole looks like because it does get covered up. Now if you do not have one of those, your craft knife, just big enough to get a brad through. So that is how you would maneuver that. 
And right here, I can actually see where that little mark with my pencil is. So I'm going to make sure I'm... Whoops, I slipped. Then I can do that. Okay, I am going to install this left side. So again, whichever one you have, this one perhaps you have, we're going to install it here. Again, if you have the latch that swings the other direction, you're going to hold off on that because it's going to have to go on this side and you would, you would be using this one. Okay? Let's grab some brats. I've got a couple brats and they actually aren't silver. It doesn't matter, to be honest. Let's just make sure that you can get through to the other side so I can see what I'm doing. When you put it through, there is there is some room there for you. Um, however, you're not going to glue it down right now because what you're going to want to do is once you um, put your uh, little prongs back, you won't glue this until you're ready to lay your paper, your decorative paper over this. So. Um, if you have your decorative paper ready to go, you can cut it to fit and then punch through the holes and then put this on. And when you, you have your paper cut for this side, then you can do the same thing until you have your paper, uh, decorative paper on both sides, then you will glue this all down. But for now, we're just going to put our brats through. I hope that made sense. So I'm just going to put these brads over and until I get glue and all that good stuff underneath this metal latch, um, it's going to not be as tight as we may want, So, but it does tighten up once you do it. So here we go, there's our latch on that side, okay? So I am just going to pull that upright. I'm going to clamp this shut again, making sure it's even top to bottom. All right, so this is the side that needs the shim. But before we start doing that, what we're going to do is latch it once again. But this time, when you have that latch, you're going to hold that down with your finger as soon as you know that it latches good and you're going to pull that back. Now you know where you're supposed to be. Make sure the top of this is even with the top of that. And I cannot see mine so I'm going to tilt it right there. And we're going to do the same thing we did before is making our little circles with our pencil marks. Okay. So I've got my two holes there. Now I can unclamp this. Now one thing about this EK Tools Heavy Duty Punch, it does not reach in from that side. So this is where I'm going to want to use my craft knife or if I have a stronger punch, uh, that would work. So I'm just going to pop right through this. Okay, it is time to glue these two pieces together. Oops, I think this bottle is done. It's time to move over to my other one. Come on, just a little more. That's all I need. Aha, <laughs> I got some. And you'll sandwich one on top of the other. Now you can trim this up after the fact. Okay, so this, this is what's going to sit on top. And this is where you're going to lay this down center it or bring it over to the left. We're going to trim off whichever is easiest for you. And then what we're going to do is do our little pencil marks and then we can poke through. Now once you pop through there you do need to make sure you can get your brad through before we do this next step. So make sure that it fits through the holes that you made and comes out the other side. Okay what we're going to do whoops, now I got too much glue, is we're actually going to apply glue, whoops, wrong side, I'm working with the silver. So we're just going to apply glue underneath this, okay, and it's just to help keep it stationary, 
Okay, slip your bread through. All right, once you know where that is, you can trim off your excess that you don't need. Okay, here's the thing. On the, uh, because we had to put a shim in, um, you're gonna not have a whole lot right here to get through. So that is why I said it's important that um, if you have your paper and stuff like that, that's where we're going to be gluing it uh, after you got your paper. So it will fit through and you will see, and I usually like to pull it down and push down, you will see where your brads will barely make it through, but they do. And you'll just push those down. Okay. So now what you're going to want to do is make sure it works and it should latch. And again, this one over here is going to be loose until we add glue underneath and your paper and to the back of those prongs. All right, there were two leftover pieces for us and that was a six and three eighths by five and or six and three eighths by seven and a half. What this is is just to cover up the black cardstock and it will fit top to bottom along with that so you can overlap it and bring it over like this. Okay, so when you do your decorative paper, it's going to look nice. All right, for this part, um, score tape I recommend and you'll want to apply your adhesive to the side that you wrote on. Um, I'm going to use my quarter inch score tape and I'm just going to do what I always do is go around the edges like a picture frame and then I'm going to put one down the middle and two on either side and I'm going to place it and we'll place that together. So let's get these ready. So I am at the front of my album and I am ready to lay this down matching it up top and bottom best I can and placing the back one now that you saw the first remove your score tape backing and place this all of mine is down that is the end of this tutorial all you have left to do is put, get your decorative paper and go to town on covering it and uh, making a beautiful uh, album um, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions, please feel free to uh, message me. Um, I'm always here. Also, um, going forward, we are going to start offering uh, kits for some of the tutorials that um, JS Hobbies and Crafts will have uh, from uh, myself or possibly even some of the other designers. So keep your eyes out for that. Happy crafting, everybody.